Okay, so when Rutherford did his experiment, he was actually probing the structure of a gold atom. And um, you can actually, if you sit in the dark for 20 to 30 minutes, um, your eyes will actually adjust and they'll be about 25% efficient to seeing individual photons. So if you were to go in a cave or someplace 100% dark with absolutely no light and stick this scintillator right up to your eye, you might see a flash of light um, maybe once or twice a second. Well, actually, I take that back. It'd probably be about between a, one flash of light between two and four, every two and four seconds because your eyes are about 25% efficient. Okay, so Rutherford and his colleagues had to sit around looking at this for hours at a time, counting flashes of light in a perfectly dark room. Um, so you can actually buy some scintillator, and if you make a perfectly dark room, and when I say perfectly dark, I mean it has to be perfectly dark, absolutely no light, like a cave. Um, you can actually buy scintillator and just look at it uh, after you've adjusted your eyes, and you may actually see the photons uh, coming off of the scintillator. Um, just, just a fun fact here is that cat's eyes are about 75% efficient. So if there, if four photons hit our eyes, uh, on average, we will see one of them as a flash. Whereas cat's eyes, uh, if same thing has happened, uh, on average, the cats will see three out of the four, uh, photons as flashes. So, um, you can get your cats to do your experiment for you. Um, but in all seriousness, um, the photomultiplier tube gives us a way to, um, actually get a um, electric uh, data uh, coming out. So where's your eyes? Um, you have to count it and write it on a piece of paper. This is going to give me a way to um, do it electrically as well as save time by having me not have to spend hours and hours looking uh, into a piece of plastic in the dark, uh, which is not fun. So the way a photomultiplier tube works is it uses the photoelectric effect. So uh, when light strikes... Uh, a specific material, and I, I don't know what it is for my photomultiplier tube or for any photomultiplier tubes, you'd have to look that up yourself. Um, it produces an electron. All right, so um, there's going to be some energy loss there, obviously, uh, but the electron is going to maintain most of the energy of the photon coming from the scintillator. So um, what's kind of ironic about this detector is it takes a muon, which is essentially a heavy electron, converts it to light, converts it back to electronics, after it sends it through all of this, um, the op amps, it actually converts it back to light and then back to electricity. So I'm converting things from uh, leptons to photons and back to leptons and photons and back to leptons. And I just think it's kind of funny how um, I keep switching it and how uh, in physics that that actually works. It's pretty fascinating. So... Um, the way the photomultiplier tube works is that uh, the light uh, strikes the photoelectric uh, material, produces an electron, and this electron is actually focused um, by a focusing uh, electrode. Not all photomultiplier tube ha tubes have this, and I don't believe mine does. Um, but then what it does is basically there is, um, there's the cathode, and this cathode is about, in my case, negative 930 kilo, or not, not, negative 930 volts. Okay, this is produced by a CW multiplier. Um, and this, this is ref, uh, referenced to Maine's Earth, by the way. So this is connected to my copper pipes, which go into the Earth itself. Um, that's due to the fact that my CW multiplier needs to be Maine's Earth referenced. And it's always a good idea to have the um, cathode of the photomultiplier tube uh, referenced. Or, sorry, the, um, the ground from your photomultiplier circuit to be Maine's Earth referenced. It's a good idea. Uh, although I didn't actually get a chance to test it. So anyways, uh, I have this uh, photomultiplier tube. And what happens to the electron that comes out of the focusing electrode? We'll just assume, even though mine doesn't have it, we'll assume that uh, the that, uh, photomultiplier tube that uh, you're using does. So it comes out of the focusing electrode, and um, it will strike a dynode. Okay, so these dynodes are specially shaped. Uh, you can see them. Uh, right here, um, there's many of them, uh, as many as 10 or 12 in some photomultiplier tubes. And these dynodes are held at increasing potential up to the minus 1 kilovolts, roughly. I know it's 930, but I'll just say minus 1 kilovolts because it's faster and simpler. Uh, and this is done with a simple resistor divider network of about 270 kilo ohms, which creates a total impedance of about 4 Mega ohms, which actually drops my CW multiplier from 2,300 volts to 900 volts.
well, actually negative 2,300 to negative 900. Um, and so uh, these dynodes are held at increasing potentials with that resistor divider network with each dynode just being um, placed between the resistors. Um, and so the way it works is the electron will actually be accelerated by this potential between every dynode. Okay, so for the first dynode, it's gonna be one electron. Uh, it's gonna be accelerated to the dynode. It's gonna hit the dynode. And that energy that the electron gained during acceleration will go to produce multiple lower energy electrons. So we're converting a higher energy single electron to lower energy multiple electrons. Those electrons will then gain energy as they're accelerated towards the de de next dynode and uh, rinse and repeat the process. Um, and over 10 at, or 12 times, depending on your um, photomultiplier tube, you can probably get smaller or larger ones custom order. Um, but, you know, 8 to 12, 9 to 12 is pretty standard. Um, never actually bothered to count mine, but you can look in the picture. So uh, at the end, um, this will actually result in a gain of upwards of a million, um, depending on your voltage. The higher the acceleration voltage, the higher the gain, because uh, the more lower energy electrons you'll be able to produce, um, because uh, the electrons will actually gain more energy as they're being accelerated. So negative 900 is about the low end for my, um, for my specific photomultiplier tube um, to detect such a low level. Because obviously, the reason I'm using a photomultiplier tube and not something simpler uh, is because photomultiplier tubes are about the only thing that I know of that can actually, or that are actually sensitive enough to detect light um, this level. So um, you can use photomultiplier tubes to detect uh, greater amounts of light uh, very precisely. Um, you can, but uh, their main use is to detect really low levels of light, in this case, sing singular photons, which is the lowest level of light you can possibly get. And photomultiplier tubes do a great job at this, um, so that's why I'm actually using one. So at the very end, um, after all the dynodes, uh, you'll have this huge amount of electrons because they've been multiplied, you know, one, you know, you'll have millions of electrons because of your million uh, or so multiplication. And these electrons will hit an anode. Um, I'm sorry if I'm messing up the terms, an terms anode and cathode here. Uh, I, sometimes I get confused.